When I quit my job as an air traffic controller to travel full time, I didn't know anybody else who'd done anything so uh, crazy. And it was all a bit daunting, the whole thing. Don't get me wrong, there was a lot of hard work between the idea of, I'm gonna do this, to, okay, I've just handed in my notice and I'm actually doing this. And that is probably the topic for an entire other video. But five years on, I reflect back on what I wish I'd known before I quit my job to go traveling. And there are five main things that I, uh, I really wish someone had told me before I started. So if you are thinking of quitting your job to go traveling or to be a digital nomad, or even just to retire early, then here are five things that you should think about before you do. Hey, if we've not met before, I'm Kat. I've been living full-time in my motorhome for several years now, give or take 2020, we don't really count that one. My mission is to tell you the truth about life on the road, not just the, uh, the upsides and the sunshine and the rainbows and the beautifully posed Instagram photos, but also the downsides, the mistakes I make, and the things that you really do need to think about because this life is not for everybody. So if you're new to the channel and you want to get more tips and advice about motorhoming or life on the road, then do feel free to subscribe. Right, let's dive in. Five things to think about before you pull the plug on your job to go full-time traveling. Number one, that first payday when you don't get any extra money into your bank account is terrifying. You will sit there in a state of panic and go, oh my God, and second guess everything that you have ever done in your life ever. It's really genuinely scary. You're like, this is it. <laughs> is that enough? I don't know anymore. I thought it was enough, but I'm not sure anymore. So be prepared for that. And whilst we're talking about money, please, please put together an emergency fund, something so that you've got enough money to fix anything that would happen. I would say a minimum of a thousand pounds, ideally two or three thousand pounds if that's possible for you. And then you keep that in a separate account, but so you can access it quickly if you need to. So if you have an accident, if uh, somebody is ill, a relative's ill, you need to park up the van, get a flight to get home, anything like that, just having that money in a bank account, or even if you've got a credit card that you can use will make things so much easier if and when because sadly it probably is a when uh, something goes wrong with the van or you need to fix something just having that will make your life so much less stressful number two unless you've won the lottery or have a very generous relative or somebody is subsidizing you you cannot live and travel full-time on the road like you do when you're holidaying on the road the amount of expenses the amount of food you eat not a holiday it's life so you do have to have that balance and unfortunately there are still chores to do and taxes to pay and looking after yourself side of it eating properly and exercising that'll have to be done cleaning the van cleaning yourself cleaning your clothes all the rest of the stuff all the chores and everything does have to take place as well and not in the same way that it does when you are holidaying so it's a subtle difference but there's definitely a difference and if i'm honest i'm not entirely sure i was prepared for that i kind of thought every day would be croissants for breakfast and beautiful mountain vistas and it's not like that at all of course it's not so just be prepared for a bit more reality in your lifestyle <laughs> number three and this is important if you have friends or family who want to come out and join you on your travels particularly if you're traveling on your own do not agree to meet them at the airport because trying to get a motorhome into an airport is a freaking nightmare so find a campsite somewhere near an airport or wherever they're coming in if they're coming on a boat or whatever and then get them to come to you it's so much easier also if you are going to do that add in a whole load of buffer time for you to get to wherever they're going to meet you don't be like right i think i can get there if i drive 300 miles every day because you'll get there and you'll be exhausted or something will go wrong and you won't get there and the stress levels go up so add in loads of buffer time and if there isn't an easy way of doing it don't do it i'm going to iceland in a couple of weeks and there's a big ring road and there's only one airport where people can fly into and I've had a few people like, oh, I'll come out and join you for a couple of days. And whilst it would be lovely, and a couple of people are coming out to join me for a couple of days, trying to get them from the airport, which is on this bit of the island, to when I'm up here is impossible. So I've had to say, look, I'm sorry. It's just going to cause too much hassle unless you're prepared to hire a car and drive out to see me. But that, of course, increases the expense. But it's just, it's just difficult. So be practical about getting other people to join you. Number four, and this is probably the biggest mistake I made and the biggest lesson I've learned traveling every single day is exhausting now you might have already experienced that if you've done say a week or two week holiday and you want to see as much as possible so you're driving every day and trying to cram in sightseeing and everything else it's tiring you come back and you need a holiday after your holiday 
living on the road is exactly the same if you're traveling and even if you're just traveling you know via airports or other ways of traveling it doesn't have to be in a van but traveling every single day is really tiring so trying to find a balance that works for you is so important i have found a balance now for me especially because i work now and i've got the website and i've got youtube and i've got everything else that goes along with that with wandering bird I have now a sort of a work day where I don't move and I just get my head into my work. I have a driving day and then I have a sightseeing day where ideally I don't move. So I'm trying to drive in one every three days, maybe even four if I can. And sometimes it's nice to just book into a campsite like I am right now and not move for a few days. And you know, you're not wild camping, you're not off grid, you're not doing anything. You're just chilling. They've got a laundry here. They've got amazing showers and I can take advantage of all those facilities and just relax and sometimes you need that a break from full-time travel is a bit like a holiday from your life now we still all need a bit of a change change is as good as the rest as they say so that's really important don't think you'll be traveling 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 you'll burn out so quickly and lastly number five the biggest thing i wish someone had told me before i quit my job to go traveling is that although it sounds idyllic and amazing and don't get me wrong i know i am incredibly lucky and incredibly privileged to have had the opportunity to leave my job and go traveling don't don't mistake that i'm so grateful for that but i need more i needed more than just getting in a van and going off and what's the next place and what's the next place for me and for a lot of people that I've spoken to on the road they needed more sort of fulfillment and that's where the wandering bird thing came from was just giving it back to people sharing my experiences helping other people get started and just building up other people's confidence to go off and have adventures and that's why I do this I love people sending me emails and messages going ah we use your advice we've had an amazing trip and I was so scared beforehand but it was fantastic and thank you so much it really helped that's what builds me up I think that's brilliant and I've started helping some friends build their own websites not in van life or motorhoming but in totally different niches and there are so many people who want something else it doesn't have to be a website or a blog or a YouTube channel or anything like that you know people um, I've met who do knitting for uh, like baby charities and pre so they make these beautiful baby blankets that then go off to hospitals or there are people who raise money for cancer charities there's so many things that you can do whilst you're traveling painting and art and music and all of these other things you can take your hobbies with you and sometimes your hobbies can become a job or a form of income but be aware that you will probably need something else in your life at some point and have a think maybe before you quit your job on what that could be and what what lights you up what gets you excited it's weird because you feel like you have to enjoy this you have to, you've had this opportunity and you have to grab it with both hands but actually if you're honest with yourself it's not quite what you thought and you're feeling a little bit empty and then you feel guilty for being a little bit empty because so many people would kill to be in this situation and then your, your brain just goes and somebody like me who struggles a little bit with mental health I really really struggled with that this should be the best thing in my life I should be loving this and don't get me wrong I watched for a few weeks uh, having a holiday was amazing but then going back into actually, you know this is my life what do I need that that would really uh, really something that I was not prepared for and I had to go through a whole journey on on what uh, excited me and what got me up in the morning and what what made this whole thing worthwhile for me and that's something that of course is going to be different for everyone but like I say something that I wish somebody had told me before I started traveling so I hope you find that useful and helpful if you are in that position where you are thinking about leaving your job to go traveling whether it's in a van or backpacking or anything else like that just be aware of all of those different things and you will find the transition hopefully a lot smoother than I did if you haven't heard the story about how this all started then you'll find this video helpful and if you're new and you want more tips for motorhoming and van life and being a digital nomad then please do hit subscribe thank you as always for your time and i'll see you on the next video bye